Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It's time for the final word on Leeds versus Southampton. Before we get into the video, please like the video. Let's aim for 500 likes. I'm going to keep asking for that until we hit that stuff. So make sure you hit that up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. 2,100 subscribers now. We want to get to 3K as soon as possible. I've set myself the target at the end of the season. That's going to be a struggle, but we'll give it a go. You can make that happen. Make sure you get your comments in. I will reply to as many as possible. And of course, get the notification bell on. Thanks for all those that have watched the Top Flight News Bite. That'll be on this evening. I'll get that posted out as well. No daily leads today, because as I say, it's the final word time. But your daily leads content will be all jam-packed into tomorrow's show. Hope you enjoy the final word, and let's get into it. Leeds, heard it right. It's going to be just Joe, and it's going to be all about football. He showed the scent. Van Fruit, it's in! Yes! Yes! I've not seen many more appearances from Pablo. Fantastic inaugural guest. I have to pull out the big guns. Well then guys, it was a 10th win on the road yesterday for Leeds United. It's the first time Leeds have completed our first league double over Southampton since 05 or 06. A top 10 finish now guaranteed on our return to the top flight. Absolutely magnificent. Honestly, from our last 10 games, no team has more points and no team has conceded less than this Leeds United side. With Manchester City losing to Brighton yesterday as well, we are the form team. Apparently we suffer burnout, but we are the form team. Of course, we run out 2-0 winners with goals from Paddy Bamford. And of course, Tyler Roberts got his first Premier League goal. I was absolutely buzzing for him. To be honest, I don't think the game was that great. Um, I said it was pretty poor and I got a bit of backlash on Twitter. Not much, but I do think it was still pretty poor. Maybe I'm a bit of a football snob now. I'm expected to higher standards. The, the first half was really poor. Yes, we did take control in the second. Yes, Southampton dropped off, much like they did in the first half. Much like they do all the time under Ralph Harsen Hootel. They go for 15, 20 minutes and then just gradually taper off, get weaker and weaker. And as we know with this Leeds United side, we just get stronger and stronger and we won the game 2-0. Let's think about the start though. I mean, the selection, the selection was a really strange one. Kiko Casilla put in there and being confirmed by Marcelo Bielsa that he will play till the end of the season. So he will start against West Brom at Ellen Road on Sunday. Um, look, he got a clean sheet. Okay, great. But, I, you know, some have said he made some key saves. I think they were saves that he should make. That's his job. He's a goalkeeper. He still had shades of the Clark Kent, Mr. Superman for me at certain corners. There was ones where he got himself in a dangerous situation coming out to uh, Theo Walcott where you're thinking, oh man, he's going to take him out at the knees here. He's going to get a red card. It's going to be a penalty. We're going to be 1-0 down. But that's what Kiko Kassi has done to me. Regardless of the off-field issues, which I don't agree with, and to be honest, I'm hoping that Leeds United are giving these game times to put him in the shop window to show other clubs that he is still fit and he can be a goalkeeper at some level. I don't think Premier League level, but, you know, he... he um, he, yeah, let's move him on, is what I'm trying to say. But listen, he got a clean sheet yesterday. He made some OK saves, but that's what's expected. Um, bit of a strange one, him coming in. I, I, I was surprised Rodrigo started in the middle of the park. I thought, if you're going to change it and you're going to make changes, obviously we know he's let Click and Cock leave early. Um, I think if you're going to make changes, give Rodrigo a, a go up top. Um, you know, it, it seemed a bit of a strange selection. Um, but listen, it, it worked out OK in the end, didn't we? I thought Rodrigo actually had, um, you know, a decent game. It was actually his first start since January. Um, his technical ability is next level. Like, it's just next level. Him and Rafinha, you can see it sometimes. Rodrigo, when he plays certain passes and people don't get on the end of him, there's that little bit of, oh, you know, that little bit of frustration. But he's that next level up, you know, and that's what you pay the money for. I mean, the assist for Bamford's goal was absolutely special. The little dink over the top from the position that he was in. Bamford... Let it run across him. I thought he was gonna, not going to score. I thought he'd let it run too far, but he managed to dink it through Alex McCarthy's legs um, and, and make it 1-0. There was also a period of time, uh, I think in the second half, where Dallas had a strike that McCarthy made a great save from. And the chest down from Rodrigo was just special, just lovely weird. I mean, to have the ability to be able to check... I know, listen, I know the Premier League football, but it was just 
unbelievable technical ability for him to chest it down into Bamford's path. Um, look, I still want to see him in the number nine uh, on a more regular basis, but he, he's been in great form. And as we know with Bielsa, players get better, not worse under his uh, tutelage. And we've already seen now that's three goals in two games. He's got an assist for himself as well. Um, it, it, it was great to see. Um, in terms of the other players we see, obviously we got to see Gaetano Berardi. He can now call himself a Premier League footballer. I expect him to play um, on um, or, or on Sunday as well and, and have a fitting farewell. There was a lovely little piece on social media from Liam Cooper saying, delighted for your brother. This man is everything we are about and more. He, in a, he is an example for everyone. And we know what he's done for these, this club. We, we go back to the Sick Note 6 and he took a stand. Exceptional pro. I love Berardi. Um, Pascal Strout came on in the second half in the DM. I thought it was his best 45 minutes in that role. Um, it shows me, for me as a fan, I'm thinking, don't bother with the DM. We've got KP, we've got Cock, we've got Pascal. You know, it shows his remarkable growth as a player and the confidence he now possesses. I mean, some of the balls that he was pinging out were almost Calvin Phillips-esque at times. It was great to see. Really glad he came on and did well in that role. Um, look, Tyler came on as well. Look, I, you know, I, I'm just buzzing for him. You can see now why he didn't pass the ball to Rodrigo because he was just dying to score. He's been saying for, you know, he said in a post-match interview, I've been so frustrated you know, with it not coming in. It's a massive weight off my shoulders. It's a shame it's come where it has because he might go on a bit of a goal scoring run. If you check the celebrations as well, check out Bielsa, see how much he is absolutely buzzing that Tyler scored. It was amazing to see. I think he did the fist bump about five or six times. Um, yeah, I mean, look, he almost missed it, if we're being totally honest. He almost took too many touches. Bamford got a strike. Good save from McCarthy. Fell to Tyler and it was just nice and composed. Passed it in the corner um, and it's 2-0. And, and as I say, apart from an Ings chance and in the first half, Southampton didn't offer nothing. Um, I think it's pretty poor. Like for me, we looked on the beach. It gave me shades of a pre-season game. You could tell it was the end of the season and, and Southampton still struggled to beat this Leeds United side. You know, one loss in 10 now. I'm so gutted about that Brighton result because had we got a result there, we genuinely could have got Europe. We're going to miss out now. We are eighth in the table now as it as it currently stands. It's the highest we've been all season. We've got most of wins for a newly promoted side in the Premier League. It's unbelievable stuff, isn't it? It's unbelievable stuff. And this is what, you know, Bielsa has done to this side. I mean, just on Paddy Bamford, Harry Kane now is the only English striker with more Premier League goals than him. Um, he's the first player to, to you know, to score 10 Premier League goals away from home in a single season for a newly promoted side since Andy Johnson back in 04 or 05. Um, he's the first player of a newly promoted side to score 16 Premier League goals in a single top flight season since Charlie Austin in 14-15. The guy's just amazing, man. Um, and he's the only second, he's the second only Leeds player to score 10 away league goals um, since John Charles. Uh, you know, and that's that's back in 56, 57, you know. So this is the kind of levels this team's hit. I mean, guys, the last time we won 10 plus top flight away games in, 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 a, in a single season was back when we won the title with the likes of Lorimer, Hunter, Cherry, Bremner, Giles, Mailey, McQueen, Gray, etc., etc. I could go on. This is what this Leeds United side has done. It's absolutely unbelievable stuff. It's what Bielsa has done to this side. And I'm just so proud to be a Leeds fan. And yes, I don't think the performance was great, but you reel off all them stats and you're like, well, actually, <laughs> we're just doing bits, aren't we? That's what we do. Look at Tyler there. You can see in the background just how overjoyed he was. I think performance-wise, um, I don't think anyone was great. I thought Rodrigo came into his own second half and his technical ability is amazing. I thought Rafinha was pretty quiet. Ailing was doing decent in the box, heading the ball. He, he seems to be able to head it in his own box now. I thought Liam Cooper was great, um, to be honest. Um, he, he gets a bit of stick, unfair at times. I thought he was exceptional yesterday, made some key blocks. There was a, a few times where Kiko put him under with some balls out from the back, but it's to be expected. Expected with with Kiko in net. Uh, Alioski did okay. Uh, had a strike that was saved well by Alex uh, McCarthy. Uh, like I say, Phillips hooked off at half time. I just think purely just for the Euros, chance of Euros and 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 getting fit. I know Popey said he might have a knock, but him and Laurenti both sub, subbed off at half time. It shows you Bielsa is willing to change and switch it up. I think he's content with where we are in the league. He's obviously set himself a target of top half finish. 
We look like it's nailed on now. We well, it is nailed on. We can't. We had to win yesterday. We can't finish lower than tenth. I think we'll finish higher than that personally. But what a third season back and the fact that he's let Cop uh, click go on holiday. He's subbing Calvin. He's subbing Laurenti at half time. He's giving some of the the you know the players that might be leaving us, i.e. Kiko, Barardi time. I'm, I'm just hopeful that he gives Pablo the full ninety minutes against West Brom at home on Sunday, which game I'll be going to. So I'm really, really excited for that. Um, just just a great game. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please make sure you smash a like. As I say, let's aim for 500 likes on the video. Subscribe to the channel on that road to 3K. Get your comments in. Keep it locked later on for the daily top flight news bite, which will be coming this evening. And of course, I'll be back with your daily leads tomorrow. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Leads, leads, leads.